Hey guys and welcome back to another one. Now a few months ago we took a look at the Terramaster D5 300 storage unit and today we are going to take a quick look at the Terramaster D5 300 C. So if you want to find out what the differences are between these two models, let's go straight for it. And we are back. So for those of you that want to know right out of the bat what the differences are between the D5300 and the D5300C, really quickly, if you want to check out the D5300 review, I will leave a link down below. But basically, if we look to these two models, and I've got the D5300C right over here and the D5300 right over there, but when we look at them on the outside, there's no difference. In the inside, there is a major difference, which is the D5300 only works with software RAID, while the D5300C works with uh, hardware RAID on the first two disks, and then on the three last disks, uh, it will use them as single disks. So this is the main differences, or the main difference between these two models. So for those of you that already watched my review on the D5300, you already know the difference between that model and this one. I will leave some links down below so that you guys can check it out as well. For those of you that don't, let's go and take a look at this one. Starting with the unboxing experience, as you guys can see on screen, it follows the usual packaging from uh, Terramaster, which comes any unit very well protected. In this particular case, the D5300C from Terramaster. Then we will also find a box with some accessories and in these accessories are included a power adapter, a USB Type-C to Type-A cable, the usual documentation, two sets of hard disk stickers, two sets of screws, one for 2.5 inch disks and one for 3.5 inch disks, two sets of rubber uh, feet, in this particular case extra rubber feet, and then one regular size Phillips screwdriver, one tiny flathead screwdriver, and something similar to a SIM card tool. Now, in terms of build quality, uh, it follows up the Terramaster line. As you guys know, I've reviewed quite a few here on the channel. And what I can say is that it's a solid unit, like the other units that we have seen. Now, it's made of this solid and strong aluminum enclosure. And it has a silver plastic at the front and at the back, which honestly, it's not a bad plastic at all. It feels nice and uh, it looks nice as well. Now, in terms of design, it's something always very subjective in everything in life. And what I can say is that personally, I do like it. It fits on the type of computer that I use and the type of setup that I have. But I do imagine that some of you guys will uh, like it and some of you guys won't, depending on the computer that you use and depending on the setup that each one of us have. And in terms of connectivity, as you guys can see on the screen, it has at the back a power input jack, a USB-C port, and then the difference from this model to the other model that I was mentioning is that this one here has a RAID selector and also the reset button so that we can select the RAID array that we want. But I will share in just a few moments how it works. Now, in terms of storage, I'll be using two Toshiba X300 on slot one and two. And I will be using three Toshiba's P300, uh, two terabytes each in this particular case on slots three, four, and five. Now, moving on to set up this unit, it's exactly the same as the other units that we have seen from Terra Master. Really easy. All we need to do is to remove the hard drive bay, put in the hard drive that we choose, and then uh, use the included screws to secure it to that bay. Now, do the same with the five disks, which honestly was the most boring part in everything in this uh, complete usage. And this has happened in the past as well, just because we have to use screws. And this was and would be one of the things that I would like to suggest to Terramaster that in the future, if they can get away of uh, inserting hard drives without using screws with a quick release or something like that, that would be great. As I was saying before, in my particular case, I'll be using the Toshiba X300 on the first and second bay so that I can get the RAID array and then the P300s on the other three remaining bays. Now we just need to slide in uh, the bay into the tray and then at the end, 
push that lock button and there we go. Next we just need to plug it into a power source, connect the USB-C cable to the D5300 and of course to the computer and power it on and we can start using it which by default the drives will be used as single discs but we can change the RAID modes of the two first discs at the back as you guys can see on screen and once we change to the RAID that we want we just need to press that reset button to apply. Have in mind that this process will erase any data that we have on the hard disk so just make sure that you can afford to lose that data. Now once we have chosen the RAID array that we want and have all the disks inside we just need to format the drives. We can use Mac OS like I'm using it on my MacBook Pro of course but uh, we can also use Windows machine, Linux and so on and so forth. Now moving on to some speed tests because I know that you guys <laughs> want to know that. I did test with single disks to start with on the Toshiba P300 and in terms of speeds as you guys are watching on screen I was getting 195 megabytes per second on reads and 195 megabytes per second on writes. This are the average speeds more or less. Then I moved on to the RAID 0 on the X300 and you guys can see that I was reaching roughly 360 megabytes per second on reads and also 360 megabytes per second on writes. Then I also tested the X300 as a single disk and it was giving me 185 megabytes per second on reads and 185 megabytes per second on writes also as a average speed so quite decent for desktop disks and then just out of curiosity I also tested out with an SSD and as you guys can see we were topping out at 370 megabytes per second on writes sometimes slower on the writes and then on reads 420 megabytes per second. Now finally in terms of noise or in terms of silence as you guys want to call it. Uh, this is something really important to me especially because I do work with audio and I do voiceover sometimes and I do need a quiet environment. Now what I can say is that the fans we will not hear it. Uh, we will hear the airflow but really uh, slowly and then the only thing that we will hear are the hard drives which fortunately these drives are very silent but nonetheless that silent we can hear it and what I can feel is that uh, the same that I do with all my drives that are here on the back while I'm doing this they don't bother me at all but I can hear something at the back and the same happens with this unit. The only thing that it's missing right over here is that when I do shut down my computer at this moment the units that I've got right over there at the back they will shut down as well and I will have total silence here on the office. With the D5300C that doesn't happen. When we shut down the computer the lights of this unit will go off but we can still hear uh, the hard drives uh, inside working and uh, it's not a dead silent experience. So the only way at this moment to have a zero uh, noise environment after shutting down the computer is once we shut down the computer we will have to press the power button so that everything goes off. And if you ask me, hey Robert, is that too boring? I would say yes and no. Yes for someone like me that I'm used to units that power down automatically like the Terramaster D2 310 which is one of my favorites and I will talk about that in a couple of weeks because I'm changing a few things at the back. But for someone that is not used to that automatic system I would say that it's not bad at all <laughs> having to press one more button right over here before uh, going away. And that is it guys. Hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did so don't forget that usual thumbs up. My name is Roberto George and as always I'll see you guys on the next one.